What's going on internet? So today what we're going to do is learn about scaling up your work. I'm gonna share four different ways of being able to scale up your design to a wall, just to make sure that you know, you're getting everything super accurate. All these different methods that I'm talking about, I've used before and I still use today. And we're gonna share the pros and cons of each, so let's get started. So the first method is freehand. Freehand is the tried and true method of, you know, just going to a wall and sketching your design out. It is one of the methods that, you know, I use for a lot of my murals when it comes to a lot of the organic elements on a wall mainly because I'm not forced to sort of get the proportions exactly right or the likeness of anything so if I'm drawing a flower I can just freehand that and get it done so freehanding requires absolutely no other materials other than the actual tool you're using to sketch things out and I use transparent spray paint because that just is sort of like a sort of like sketch lines it's not as opaque as sort of like a a solid black color so that is what I use to sort of sketch a lot of my work out so when you're using the freehand method of scaling up your work you're also building the skill set to actually sketch on a larger scale it's easy to do that when you're on a canvas or in your notebook but it's very difficult to sketch on a larger scale because you, everything's larger you're really close up and you know your mistakes cost you a lot when it comes to you know correcting them when it comes to time sketching on a larger scale is something that you really have to get used to and familiarize yourself with but it's something that I think you should definitely learn how to do on a regular basis the only drawback to scaling up your work using the freehand method is that it does take a lot of time to actually complete the process because you're actually sketching and you know working on proportions and sizing and all this other stuff as you're sort of going about the you know the the composition so the second method is the grid system. And the grid system is something that I learned when I first started out. And the grid system is great because it's really accurate. It's like it says in the name, it's a grid system. So you have a grid on the design that you want to sort of scale up your, your artwork. And then you have a grid on the wall that you sort of correspond each of those quadrants or each of those perfect squares to, from your design to the wall. And that is basically a way of mapping everything out so you know exactly how it will look on the wall when you have the grid on the wall. It is a great method to make sure that you get everything super accurate on the wall. It's also great because you can do that any time of the day, day or nighttime, you're able to make a grid and you're able to work on larger walls versus the freehand method. Because if you're doing freehand, like I said, sometimes correcting some of those mistakes are very difficult, but when you're using the grid system everything is in those little squares that you create on the wall so you know exactly what you're getting before you even put down a mark the drawback to doing a grid system is that it does require a lot sometimes it requires you to have certain tools like a chalk line or a level or even a measuring tape to sort of measure out the wall because you have to do a lot of math so setting up the grid is going to be a little bit tedious and sometimes it's a little bit more difficult because as you know a lot of the architecture and land landscape is not even it's not on a perfect 90 degree angle so sometimes you you're sort of working on a slanted level or a slanted wall slanted sort of pavement and you have to sort of figure out exactly how to get an even grid on both sides because you have to get these perfect squares but the grid system is fairly easy to do a lot of people also do that on you know large canvases as well so it's nothing that is sort of, sort of outside the realm of what artists normally do the third method is the doodle grid and I use the doodle grid today for a lot of my mural so the doodle grid method and I did a video on this so I'll have this card above so the way the doodle grid method works is that you're making markings on the wall letters numbers symbols whatever you want to that's why they call it doodle grid and then you're taking a picture of the wall that you just marked up with all the letters and numbers and doodles and then you're sort of putting that into your phone or an iPad or computer into a program like Photoshop or Pro create you then layer that beneath the actual design or the composition that you want to put up on the wall you turn down the opacity of your composition or design and then you sort of just play around with the sizing and that way you're able to say hey this is my design 
on the wall that I want to paint and these are the markings uh, that I'm able to use as reference marks when sketching out my design. People like it because it requires pretty much no math. The only tools that you really need are your phone or an iPad or something to take a picture and sort of throw it into a program like Procreate or Photoshop. And with this method, like the grid system, the original one, you're able to work really large. So I used this method on a lot of my recent murals I did uh, one on the University of Colorado Denver, which was about 70 feet tall. And I did the doodle grid system on that building right there. And that turned out really well. The drawbacks to using this method is that when you're taking a picture, sometimes you have a wide angle lens or a fish eyed lens. So you have to fix that distortion uh, when you're taking a picture and throwing that into the program you're going to use to layer your design on top. So you have to make sure that the picture is pretty much sort of like a flat pancake. And you have to do that. Like I said because when you're taking a picture with wide angle lens on your phone things like that sometimes it just distorts uh, the perspective one other reason why I like this a lot is that you're able to do really just odd walls and what I mean by that is like the walls can be slanted you know they can be any shape and you know you can have a ton of obstructions in the middle of the wall whereas a grid system you know you're trying to get you know a really flat wall that's sort of smooth and has no obstructions whereas this doodle grid method you're able to have anything in front of you and basically you're able to build a grid on it. The only other drawback to using this method is that you have to cover up all the markings that you made on the wall because you're making markings and sort of build this reference point, you have to cover all that stuff up. That is why I use a lot of transparent spray paint because it's a little bit easier to cover that up uh, when I'm painting on top of it versus having like opaque spray paint that I use for markings. So that's just one of the annoying things uh, that you sort of have to work out. The last method is this right here, the projector. I use this very seldomly, only on interior murals that are in like office spaces, mainly because uh, with the projector, basically you're just projecting your design on a wall and you're sort of getting it done really, or sketching it out really fast because you can easily see your design and sort of the sizing of it. And I do this when I'm pressed for time. A lot of times it's like interior murals at office spaces where I'm working at odd hours. Uh, when they're working in the office, I come in afterwards and have to do a mural. So I use the projector in those situations. So the projector is really great when it comes to speed and when it comes to accuracy. The drawbacks is that you have to have power, you know, you have to have have dimly lit or dark area. It requires space to sort of back up the projector to sort of size it up. You have to get a projector that is able to do the size that you want to. You have to make sure the angles and sort of the keystone is right so it's not sort of awkward or sort of skewed in different ways. And it just requires, you know, power as well. So, you know, you're having cords running everywhere. You're having a lot of stuff just connected to it. But it is a method that, you know, when I'm press for time, you know, I will use. And for outdoor murals, you know, you have to have a really powerful projector. You can rent those uh, rather than having to buy one yourself, but they just also, like I said, they require power. They require you to sometimes work at nighttime. It does take a lot of technology to actually do the projector, but you know, it's one of the fastest methods of getting up a very complex composition. So in the end, I rely on every method that I talked about to scale up my work. Every mural and every situation is going to be different so I utilize some of these different methods for some of these different situations. I rely mostly on the doodle grid and then freehanding every sort of organic element in my composition. Depending on the work that you do, your style, you know what's required will require different sort of methods of scaling up your work. So try out all these different methods, play around with them, see what works best for your artwork and your style and sort of like your process and do what's best for you. So hopefully this video helped out. I will have a link to my doodle grid video as well because that is something like I said is very popular. A lot of artists do that today and that is one of the sort of methods that you know you can go anywhere in the world and just use your phone to scale up your work on a really large wall. So that is something that I always always try to share with artists. So I'll see you next time. Peace.